Today, I'm gonna go through with you guys the 10 things I wish I would have known when I first started in the real estate industry. Now, I started in the industry a decade ago and I really wish that somebody sat me down and told me that these things were just not true. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip for the very end. Please like and subscribe to this channel so you can get more content just like this. So the first thing that I wish that people would have told me is that agents in your office will help. And that's just not true because if they came out and helped you and they give you their best secrets, they're going to be taking market share from themselves. That's why you don't see the highest producers giving all their top secrets to the people that are directly in their office because they know that they are building their direct competitors. And, and in reality, the best way to do this would be to learn from somebody potentially not in your marketplace so you can get their best tricks, tools, resources, and advice so that you could grow faster and not have to hit as many hurdles along the way. The second thing that I wish people had not told me is that it would take three to six months to get your first deal. That being said, it is true that almost on average, Agents do take three to six months to get their first transaction, but it does not have to be that way. With the right tools, resources, prospecting systems, there is no reason why it should take you even longer than a month to get your first transaction. It sometimes happens that people get bogged down too much into training and not executing. And I think that industry-wide, we have a problem telling brand new agents to train, 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 when in reality, what we need to have them do is train, train, now go execute, execute. And that way you're not going to be spending a half of a year without a paycheck. Another thing that I wish people did not tell me is that you have to spend money to win, spend money to make money, and that's just simply not true. It used to be a advertising economy where if you really wanted deals, you really wanted more clients, you could go to third-party platforms like Zillow and the likes, and you could pay a lot of money and get a lot of attention, and that would get you leads that you could then try to convert. That being said, it's not necessary. There's zero reason that you should go in, especially if you're a new or newer agent, and start spending thousands of dollars on online platform leads when you don't know if they will convert, you don't know if you will convert from them, and you have no proven success on the platform. It doesn't make sense. If you're brand new or newer, I always suggest proving to yourself and the marketplace that you can go out and get deals yourself, get clients yourself before you start putting money ahead of getting the prospect's attention. What you can do today that's totally different than it used to be is garner lots of attention just by creating content, getting people to be attracted to you instead of sending out advertisements. It's a completely different way to get business and it's a substantially better way to increase your conversion rates when they come through your funnels. For example, if, an, if a buyer or a seller happens to see my videos, they're going to then look at me, they're going to then know, like, and trust me because they've seen my content, and then when they come to me, they are already wanting to work with me. Versus if you pay for ads on a third-party platform, what's happening is the platform's just sending those people to anybody and anybody who is paying for the, those people to be sent to them. Meaning you have no connection with them, they have no connection to you, and it's gonna be substantially harder to get those clients to want to work with you and eventually end up closing transactions with you. Now, another big thing that I feel is told across the industry and is completely not true is do not door knock or cold call. And a lot of agents say, I don't like to door knock, I don't like to cold call. And a lot of agents say, door knocking and cold calling just doesn't work. And that's absolutely untrue. 
true. What I'm here to say is both of them completely work if you do them properly and consistent enough to see the results that can attach to them. If you're coming in and you're doing door knocking and you do 10 doors and you stop, yes, you're gonna have very little results. If you cold call people and you only call 100 houses and 10 people pick up, yes, you're going to have bad results. But if you completely block off time in your schedule every single day to dedicate to those prospecting efforts and you stay consistent with those efforts, you will garner amazing results because you're doing things that nobody else in the marketplace is doing and you're putting yourself toe to toe with a lot more potential clients and customers than everybody else in the marketplace. That is a great way to very inexpensively create a substantially larger net to potentially get new clients. Another one along the, that same vein is the fact that open houses don't work. And I hear this time and time again, and I built my entire original business off of open houses. What happens is, is agents, especially seasoned agents, like to tell new agents that open houses just don't work and they hearken their own experiences. They say, hey, opens don't work. I've sat opens and I usually only get one client a year from opens. Well, here's the rub. I've done the math and I'm here to tell you that the average agent that's seasoned that's telling you they only get one deal per year from open houses is probably speaking from the standpoint that they get one based on the amount of activity and the length that they hold them and the amount that they hold per year. So let's do the math backwards. Those average seasoned agents are usually holding one to two open houses every week. Let's say they do it for 50 weeks. They hold one on average because they're not holding open houses every weekend. They're usually doing them every two weekends and they will hold the same open house. So let's say on average, they're holding about 40 open houses every single year and they're getting a client from it. Well, if you're a new agent and I work the math backwards and I can show you how you can do 40 open houses in a single month, you are gonna do multiple things all at once. You're going to walk more product, learn more marketplaces, learn more neighborhoods, talk to more clients, skew the net wider, increase your marketplace knowledge, and you're going to also talk to the same clients sometimes multiple times over, increasing your likelihood to work with them, and even if you just hit the same metrics that they did, you're likely to get a client. In reality, if you do my open house strategies in other videos that you can find on my channel, you're likely to get a client every weekend or every other weekend. That being said, the next big one is that online leads are bad. And here's the thing, I'm, I agree and I disagree. It depends on the platform that you use and it depends on the way that you go about it and how you implement it into your business. For me, I like integrating multiple lead source systems that are completely free up front. That's a big thing. I don't want agents, especially newer agents, to spend lots of money on third party ads when you don't know whether they're going to convert or not. What I do think is an amazing resource is connecting you with multiple third-party platforms that send leads for free. When you close leads, you will pay referral fees to those platforms. And adding that as a subsidiary to your regular prospecting efforts is an amazing way to supplement the growth of your business. And yes, you do take less money for it, but there is zero risk associated because there's no upfront cost. So yes, online leads don't convert really high, but when you're not paying any money for them, it's an amazing way to start building traction in your business. A lot of people in the industry also say that everybody wants an experienced agent. And as much as that's true, and you're gonna compete with a lot of people that are going to say, I've been in the business for five years, or like me, I've been in the business for a decade, or I've been in the business for 20 years, but the reality isn't that they're hiring an agent for how long they've been in the business. Most of the time, they're hiring an agent and they're only interviewing multiple agents because they're interested in what that agent's gonna do by ways of a marketing plan. So if you sit down and you've created an amazing marketing plan, 
even if you're younger or you're newer in the business, the time that you've been in the business isn't that relevant if you can show that what you're going to do and provide is leaps and bounds ahead of the competition because they could have been doing it wrong for 20 years and there's no reason to believe that that's not the case and sometimes people want to give the business to somebody newer in the business because they believe that you're going to be hungrier so prove to them that you have better commu communication skills that you're going to have a better marketing plan and that you want it more and at the end of the day you're still going to win a lot of those opportunities Another thing that a lot, a lot, a lot of people will tell you, especially if you're not licensed yet and becoming licensed, or you're just about to get licensed, they're gonna tell you that the name of your firm matters. And I'm here to tell you the complete opposite. Nobody cares. In fact, nobody even knows the name of your firm. If you interview 99% of the clients that work with any real estate agent, they don't know where their agent hangs their license because quite frankly, they don't care. Like I said before, they're looking at their marketing plan and they're looking at whether they wanna work with you specifically as an agent, which is why building personal brand has become so important. And which is why building and picking the right real estate firm as a platform is what's important, not necessarily the real estate firm based on the brand name. It's all about what the firm can do to help support you in your entire industry growth, not just the name that's going to not actually get you any extra clients. 99.9% .9 of real estate brokerages do not hand out leads, and if they do, they're not quality leads. So don't have anybody swayed you one way or another to go to a specific brokerage because the reality is, is you wanna partner with specific people that you know can help you get and achieve the goals that you're looking to get to. Now, another big one, I heard it a billion times when I first started in the business is that my age matters. And I started in the business very young and a lot of people said that you're gonna have trouble doing business because you're young. And as far as that goes, they were a little bit correct. Some people absolutely discriminated against me because I was a younger agent than all of the other agents they were interviewing. But because I integrated my youth into my marketing plans and I proved that my youth could be an asset by ways of technology and marketing and better advertising, that led me to actually do better than I maybe could have had I been an older person. So it doesn't really matter. If you're older or you're younger, age is irrelevant. Again, it comes down to your marketing plan, your efforts, how hungry you show them that you are and how good you are of a communicator. Those are the largest determining factors of whether you're going to win somebody's business. And the last thing is going to be don't overpay for marketing. This is, could, this is completely wrong. In fact, this is the opposite of true. Agents will try to find the, le the least expensive photographers, the least expensive flyers they can buy. They will get the cheapest cards possible and they will just put listings on the market to try to sell them and they hope that the MLS does all the work for them. This is a fast way to try to save a few hundred dollars, but it is a long way to lose hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in long-term business growth and referral growth. I would love to tell you to do the right thing. Spend money on the quality photography professionals. Spend money on quality video and branding, quality tactile materials, and you will show that on the back end, you grow by leaps and bounds because of the amount of referrals you get from the sellers that see the amazing quality that you produce. When you produce mediocre or even average quality, people are not as readily excited to refer you to their friends and family. If you are doing things that are over and above what everybody else in the marketplace does, you will absolutely get substantially more business. And because of that, it makes it way, way well worth the extra cost associated with those marketing efforts. And thank you for sticking around until the very end of this video. Again, I'd, la I'd ask you to like and subscribe to this channel for continued content, but I will give you a bonus tip. 
if you were a brand new agent, finding somebody who will mentor you in the business is helpful, but not, not, not necessary. If you are a new agent, it is not necessary that you join a team. In fact, I suggest you stay individual. Getting a great mentor and a great team and a great group around you to support you and, and, and cheer you on and give you great training tools and resources is super paramount, but joining a team that gives you leads and you're a buyer's agent or something like that is absolutely not necessary. I suggest going the hard way, jump all in, learn the business from the ground up as an individual agent. You're going to learn more, you're gonna learn faster, and you're gonna have better opportunity doing it. Joining somebody's team as a buyer's agent or an assistant is quite frankly a waste of time if your end goal is to do production by yourself or grow your own sort of team. So don't do that. Just go the way yourself. Jump all in. You can do it. And with the right support, you can. If you want to partner with me, you can set up a time to have a conversation with me one-on-one -on -one and see if we'd be a good fit of working together and I could help you reach your goals doing production or even growing a team long-term. Thanks again for joining me on this video and I'll see you on the next one.